the Collette's conjecture is fascinating. Start with any positive integer. If it's an odd number, you multiply it by 3 and add 1. If it's an even number, you divide it by 2. Continue this process of divide by 2 if it is even, and multiply by 3 add 1 if it is odd, at every step until you reach 1, where it continuously cycles in this 4 2 1 loop. These numbers that we have derived is what is called a Collatz sequence. And the Collatz conjecture states that for any positive starting integer, all sequences will eventually drop down to 1 and repeat this 4 2 1 loop. The rules are simple, yet it remains unsolved since its creation in 1937. This video will not attempt to prove or disprove the conjecture, but will analyse some patterns that arise from its properties. Also, I will attempt to show that if a sequence was found to disprove this conjecture, then one or more values that take these forms could be in that sequence. There are three possible outcomes. The sequence eventually decreases to the 421 cycle. It enters another cycle, other than 421. Or it increases indefinitely. The first outcome is what the conjecture claims to occur for all positive integers. However, if an example of either the second or third outcome were to be discovered, it would disprove the Collatz conjecture. One observation is that a counterexample sequence will contain a minimum element other than 1. In other words, the conjecture claims that all Collatz sequences has a minimum value of 1. I simplified the problem by checking for any positive integer n. How many steps will it take to reach a value less than n? This simplification is assuming that all values less than n will drop down to the 4 to 1 cycle. However, it is conceivable that a starting integer n drops down below n, then rises exactly to a value in the sequence forming a non 4 to 1 cycle hence disproving the conjecture. But again, I wanted to simplify the problem to analyse some of the patterns instead of focusing on a rigorous proof. All the even numbers will take exactly one step to get lower than its starting number, as we will divide by 2 on the first step. This can be shown by thinking of an even number as 2x. Since it is even, we divide by 2, and this is lower than our starting value. An odd number multiplied by 3 will always give an odd number. If we add 1, it will always be an even number, but the term after an even number could be odd or even, possibly leading us back to square 1. From this, I concluded that it will be difficult to use this method for odd numbers. I created a Python script to generate sequences with odd starting numbers, where it will short circuit when it decreases below its starting value, then move on to the next odd number. There seemed to be some patterns, but it was difficult to tell, so I had to make some adjustments. Odd numbers increase the value by approximately 3 to 4 times, while even numbers decrease the value by exactly half. This means that for a number to eventually decrease below itself, there must be at least 1.5 to 2 times more even numbers compared to odd numbers. I made some changes to display the total number of steps it took to get below the starting value and the percentage of even numbers. We can immediately see that there are repeating total steps and repeating percentages. But for a pattern to have any significance, I wanted to see where both the total steps and percentages repeat. It seemed like every 16th number starting at 3 had the same total steps and percentage, so I made some adjustments to only output these results. 
Why is it that every 16th number starting at 3 takes exactly 6 steps to get below its starting value, and the percentage of even numbers to be this? We can write this number as 3 plus 16x. This number we know is odd, so we multiply by 3 and add 1 to get. This number is even, so we get. And we can continue this pattern. Note that for this method to work, the coefficient of x must be even. Since the coefficient of x and the constant is less than the corresponding starting values, we can deduce that this number is less than the initial number. Also, the total number of steps is 6, and the number of evens is 4, which matches our observation. Next step was to automate sequences with an input of ax plus b, which I verified with 3 plus 16x. I found that every 16th number starting at 5, 9, 13, and 17 had solutions. Every 32nd number starting at 23 and 11 worked and every 128th number starting at 15 resolved as well. I'm sure that there are many other patterns, but I stopped here. To summarize, we have shown that all even numbers will decrease below itself. And these are the types of odd numbers that we have proven to decrease below itself. The pattern isn't obvious, but we can rearrange the grid. From this, we can see that the types of odd numbers that may never decrease below itself include every 32nd number starting at 7, every 32nd number starting at 27, and every 16th number from 31 excluding numbers of this form. Following this, if a sequence is discovered that disproved the Collette's conjecture, then one or more values from that sequence must take one of these forms. Remember our analysis of even and odd numbers. If we remove this sub-step and only focus on one iteration, we can reverse this to have a set of rules for finding the previous term in the sequence. In other words, every number x has a previous term to x, and every number in the form 6x plus 4 has a previous term of 2x plus 1. An interesting way to visualize this is to create a tree where each branch is rotated clockwise when the previous term is an even number, and counterclockwise for an odd previous number. We can continue this pattern to create these visualizations. We can assign a color gradient to the magnitude of the number. And we can change the angle of rotation to get different visualizations. While researching this topic, I learnt new things about numbers and how they behave, and it was fascinating to see how a simple set of rules can generate these amazing visuals.